a lot of you know intellectual information reasons. We got to talk a lot of talk about theater, opera, Canada. But I'm really emotionally like locked down on this because there was a moment I could have been six, and it was in the church basement of St. Mary's Church in Richmond Hill, and you were teaching acting lessons, and I think I was six, mm -hmm. and I was in an American play where I had to play an old, old man, and I remember at six saying, but Leon, or maybe I called you Mr. Major, I don't know how to act old, and I remember exactly what you did. You came over to me. I was sitting in a chair like this, six years old. You knelt down in front of me. You put your hands on my feet and wait and said, try to walk. And I stood up and I tried to walk. I have never, ever forgotten that. And that was a key. You turned a key for me. I, I, you know, I actually do remember that. I do remember it very well. It's very interesting. You know, I, I, I was thinking back about our meetings over the course of the years, and that's one of the... Somebody said to me, how long have you known R.H.? I said, I think he was six. Now, I don't remember a lot of things, but that one I did remember, because for some reason you were an impressive young fellow. And your mother was there. And my mother was there. That's right. But I remember it, what struck me was... Uh, let me ask you a question. Did it help? <laughs> no, it was a total mistake. Oh, good, okay. And then I went into the theater and the rest was a disaster. <laughs> so you're... But I was struck at the immediacy of what you gave me. You gave it to me without words. No, not a long explanation. And you gave me a sensation that my young body had never felt before and started me thinking. Or not thinking, I was too young to think. Yeah. And I was... A moment struck me. Plus, you were the famous Leon Major, oh, and God. you were up in Richmond Hill, and we're in the church person that was learning acting from you. I mean, there, there was that as well, but I, don't, I never forgot yeah. that. So what made you do that? Oh, gosh, I, I have no idea why <laughs> I would do that. You, you, you know, young people, I, I can say this now because I'm quite old, but young people for me are just so wonderful because they're filled with optimism. And you can see in young people they want the opportunities. And if you can early on teach young people to think and show them that there is no right and there is no wrong, just find a way which is satisfactory for yourself and then let it grow from there. Uh, I mean, it's the whole basis of teaching. It, it's Socratic. It's, you never order, you ask questions. Why, why do you do that? Why do you do this? Not that you shouldn't, but we just don't know why. Right. And, and I think the, um, and that, you know, and I, I love teaching then and as, as I do now. Um, so why I did what I did, I have no idea, except what else would you do with a young person of six years old? You can't go into a long explanation of how the kidneys degenerate and so you're bent over all the time. You have to do something which is physical. Right. That's basically it. And teaching has been a thread your entire career. It has been. It has been um, uh, partially because um, I just like working with young people. And, and uh, when, you, when the light bulb clicks with them, it's just joyful to see them. <gasps> Got it. And then they go out and have careers, and that's very satisfying. And you teach opera now, not as it were, acting, theater acting, TV no, acting. No, no. The reason, the reason I left Canada was because the University of Maryland at College Park in, in, um, in Maryland wanted to start a graduate program in opera. They had nothing. And they asked a bunch of people, who, a couple of whom recommended me. And I got a phone call. I was in Washington, actually, doing a production I got a phone call saying, would you apply for the job? And I said, sure, because at that time I was working here in a, in a not very happy circumstance for me. Was that the Graduate Center for the Study of uh, Drama? Uh, yes. I uh, know that was at York University. Oh, at York. York. Okay. York. No, the Graduate Center for the Study of Drama was something totally different. Uh, York University and I were not a good fit. 
And, and you were uh, professor of theater there, I, right? That's what they called me. Uh, <laughs> Is it the academic setting that didn't fit, or they had... Uh, well, it was a, a, just a... Uh, you ever worked in an institution like a university? No, I don't want to. Uh, well, you know the story that the reason the stakes in a university, well, The stakes at a university are so low because everybody's backbiting. Academics don't like each other. And so it's a very small world. And most academics don't go out beyond their, their academy. And consequently, they live a, an entire life, you know, trying to defend how many grace notes you can put on the end of a pin. And that's really boring. And then practitioners uh, generally are there resentfully because they're either not, don't have the, the, the courage to go out or they like to teach, uh, but they're resentful of those who are working. I mean, it's all so complicated. But, but we are. did have hopes for the York University theater program because it had that new, mm -hmm. lovely theater, a thrust stage based sort of on Stratford. And we were trying to build the mm -hmm. institutions to support the performing arts, and right. that seemed like one of them. But this yeah. went off the rails, I think. For me, it did. For me, it did. I mean, I, I don't want to knock uh, the colleagues at York. They, they, they. Um, but we just didn't fit. It was just, uh, it was just not, in terms of ideas, not. We weren't together, and and uh, and I, I don't know how to deal with undergraduates who are so busy learning technique that. It's very hard, and I'm not a director, who, uh, a teacher who can teach technique. Uh, and so I, I was thrust into a situation where I, I didn't know how to teach, and I had to learn that, and it was a painful learning experience. And, I, I did, and York is a long way away, and there were no good coffee shops, and you know, it's all of that. Um, so you went to Maryland. So, so I went to Maryland and interviewed, and they engaged me, and we moved. And, and this was for opera, though. Opera. Because when you ran this place, Toronto Arts Production St. Lawrence Center, you were in charge of both music and yeah. theater programs. Yeah. So music has always been part of your... Always. I mean, I studied piano for a long time and studied music for a long time. Um, and and it, I have a natural tendency to go toward music. Why? Interestingly enough, I don't know. Can't give you an answer. Um, uh, I think partially because... Um, Music was a huge part of my life. My father was an amateur singer. I loved opera. <coughs> my mother took me to concerts. So it was all, all part of it. And the theater, the theater is another, another form of music, <laughs> really, what it is. But I just gravitated to And what happened in the States, as you probably know, is you're pigeonholed. Well, he's a director of opera, can't do plays. And so that which was fine because I think opera is pretty great, you know, pretty great medium, and and um, and I and singers are singers are really terrific. I love singers. They're far more humorous than actors. They don't have as much angst in rehearsal as actors. <laughs> you know, they don't pound their breast and say, "I can't work with this fork. It's not the one I used in rehearsal." You know, I never said that. No, I, I, would I accuse you? You're the ideal. I can't work with this for <laughs> You know, I mean, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of, of I mean, it, it's not, that, I mean, I, actors are terrific. You don't spend 25 or 30 years of your life with actors and not like them. Uh, you don't like some of them, but not all of them. And singers generally are, they have a lot of humor. And the problem with the acting profession, as, as I see it, sometimes there are actors who are not trained and don't know how to use their voice and they act. You can't do that if you're a singer. You cannot get on a stage and just sing unless you have a technique that allows you to sing the B-flat. You just can't do that. So at the, at the lowest possible uh, mark, the singer has to be able to read the music and sing the notes. And you are implying that that basic technique, well it's not basic, it's quite incredible, but that basic fairly deep craft in the singer 
makes the performer what, more responsible or more? More disciplined. They're more disciplined. very disciplined. I mean, a, a singer at the first rehearsal knows the role, cold, because if they don't, they can't rehearse. Right. Um, and actors come, as they should, with the book and develop it as, as they go. I can't stand that now. I walk into the first day rehearsal knowing most of my lines. Yeah, well. I cannot stand rehearsing with a book in my hand because it's not rehearsing. It's playing off a page. That's correct. And for me, That's rehearsing correct. is what we do. That's correct. And so I got to walk yeah. into the rehearsal hall knowing most of my lines. Otherwise, I waste. It's yeah. wasting. It's wasteful. So it, I remember that with with. Uh, do you remember we did the dining room here? Right. Uh, and and then we did a piece called Sullivan and Gilbert. Yes. Well, Sullivan and Gilbert, we had Fritz Weaver in it. First day of rehearsal, he was cold, off the book, cold. And what a lesson that was for some of the actors in Sullivan and Gilbert. And there are a lot of young playwrights coming up and texty playwrights, and um, we're going to, we will survive. We will survive.